first graders, it's Mrs. Bellatash. I am glad to be with you today. Today, we're gonna to talk about two new habitats. Last week, we talked about the rainforest and the tundra. When I think of the rainforest, I think of someplace warm and wet. When I think of the tundra, I think of someplace cold and dry. Today, we're gonna to start talking about the temperate forest, not a rainforest, a temperate forest, and a desert. When we finish learning about each of these two habitats, the forest and the desert, and learning about the animals and plants that live there, I want us to write down something that tells us the key points about that habitat. So first, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the forest, and a little bit about the desert, and then let's draw a picture of each habitat. The forest. Lots of plants grow in temperate forests. Summers are hot. Winters are cold. Many forest trees and bushes lose their leaves in the fall. It rains a lot in the summer. It snows in the winter. There is always water for plants and animals in the forest. Blue jays and chipmunks live in the temperate forest. The desert. Plants grow in dry, windy deserts. Desert plants get lots of light, but they get very little water. Cactus plants have long roots. The roots spread out beneath the desert floor. When it rains, the roots take in lots of water. Cactus plants store water in their thick stems. Lizards and elf owls live in the desert. Remember, we want to pay attention especially to the adaptation, the way that that plant or animal is suited for the environment. Let's start with the American beech, and that is a tree, a beech tree. And the beech trees have many leaves to catch sunlight. Hmm, now let's think, in the desert, all the plants get so much sunlight. Do they need lots of leaves so that they can catch more sunlight? No. So the American beech, is in the temperate forest. The western backed rattlesnake. These rattlesnakes are active in hot weather and can be found sunning themselves in the morning. So where is it really hot? In the desert. The prickly pear cactus. So cacti have roots that grow close to the surface of the ground. And these roots can quickly absorb water during rainy times. This is from the desert. The next animal is an earthworm. Earthworms tunnel in the moist soil to find food and to hide from predators. Is the soil moist in the desert? No. This lives in the forest. Okay, an ant. Ants build underground chambers and tunnels to store food, water, and their young. Living underground protects the ants from the heat of the desert. So they live in the desert. It tells you that right there. But they also live in the temperate forest. Ants live in lots of different environments. It's a desert tortoise. Tortoises get water from the plants they eat and from pools of rainwater. They can go for a long time without drinking water. So the desert tortoise is from the desert. The sundew can grow in wet places where the soil has few nutrients. Is the desert wet? No, this is from the temperate forest. A robin! 
Robins build a nests in trees made of mud, grass, and twigs. They line it with soft grass. Are there a lot of trees in the desert? Is there a lot of grass that they can build a nest out of? No, they are from the temperate forest. A cactus wren. Again, that name cactus probably gives it away. Cactus wrens build several nests. Most nests are used only for resting and not for raising their young. They live in the desert. The horned lizard. Horned lizards protect themselves by wiggling into the hot sand so only their heads stick out. Well, that gives me a clue that it lives in the desert. A jackrabbit. When predators are near, jackrabbits run away quickly by leaping in a zigzag. There's nothing in here that really tells us clearly which habitat, but the jackrabbit lives in the desert. A black bear. A female black bear gives birth when she is in her winter den hibernating. So usually animals don't hibernate when they live in the desert. The black bear lives in the forest. A striped skunk. The black and white stripes of the skunk are a warning to predators. Now, do you see all of the fur on that skunk? Do you think the fur would be good for living in the desert? No, this animal lives in the forest. A red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawks perch on treetops to watch for their prey. These hawks actually live in all of the different habitats. They live in the rainforest, they live in the desert, and they live in the temperate forest too. A white-tailed deer. Deer mostly live in temperate forests and grasslands. You can see that the picture has that deer within lots of grass. A cicada. The adults feed on trees by sucking the sap. Wow, so this is from the temperate forest. I've got my science notebook and I put desert over here and temperate forest over here. And now I want to think about what was the key things about the desert? What was important about the desert that makes it different from the forest? This is what I wrote about the desert. And I also drew just a simple picture to help me focus on the things that are important about the desert. In my picture, I have the sun because deserts get a lot of light. I have a cactus, which shows that it doesn't get a lot of water. And I have a snake. I wrote, the desert is hot and dry. The desert gets a lot of sunlight. The desert gets a little rain. Plants and animals must adapt to a hot, dry environment. Now you can write something different that helps you focus on the key points about the desert environment. And this is what I wrote about the temperate forest. The forest has a lot of trees. The forest gets plenty of water all year long. It can get cold, so animals need fur to stay warm. And in my picture, I have the trees, lots of trees, and I made it a little bit darker down here because there's so many trees, not as much light reaches this forest floor. So this is what I wrote, but you can write your own information about the forest. All right, first graders, next week, we're gonna be learning about a pond and the grassland. I'll see you next week.